So we're going to do the neon shape tutorial that I made on my TikTok, except I'm going to go a little bit more into depth on how exactly to do this. So I'm starting with a subject. And what I did was just add a couple of adjustment layers to play with the exposure. Here's the original photo. It's very bright. Um, it's not the best foundation to add a neon object because it's not very dark. So I just darkened the photo a little bit with these adjustment layers. Um, you can access those here through the adjustment panel. So once you have that set up, go ahead and put it in a group and then we're going to draw our shape. So let's do an ellipse. So we're just going to drag and what we don't want is fill. So we're going to uncheck fill here, but we do want a stroke. So for this one, I think I'm going to do like a blue. You can also click on this icon here and it'll bring up the color picker. So let's do it like a bright blue. So we'll do that and nothing shows up yet because we need to have a stroke. So I usually like to start with 30 and then go from there, but 30 looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave it there. And now we have to start adding our neon effects. And now that I think of it, this is looking a little big. So if you do want to adjust your shape, you can press command or control T and then while holding shift, you can drag in and out to change that shape. So this is looking better. I think I'm going to have it more like this. and just drag it back out a little bit. Perfect. So once you have the shape how you like, go ahead and click on your effects panel while selecting your shape. The first thing we're gonna add is an outer glow. So here's our outer glow. And basically what I did was put the opacity to 100% and make sure your size is big enough so you can see when you increase and decrease the size, it affects the overall feather of the shape effect. So we want to start with 100% size. If you do a spread on it, it will increase that saturation a bit. So I'm going to keep mine around 3% to start. And now what we can do is add a drop shadow. So if you will notice here, when you have a layer effect that allows for another layer effect of the same kind, it will have a plus sign. So in this case, outer glow is only available to use once, but drop shadow we can use as many times as we want. So I'm going to add a new drop shadow. And for this one, I decided to make it a bit brighter of a blue just to add that color variation into your shape. And that will give a lot of depth to the overall effect. So I went a little bit brighter. I just picked the hue going towards green instead. So once you have that, make sure to bring your opacity to 100% to start, just so you know what it looks like when you're working with it. And then just play with the size. So for a neon effect, it looks more realistic if you have a slight glow around the edge that doesn't stray too far. So we're going to stick with that. You can also play with the spread on this one as well. And I think that looks pretty good, but I want to push it further. So I'm going to add another drop shadow. So for this one, I pushed it towards dark blue. Just to add that little bit of darkness variation to it. And again, we're going to uncheck global light because we don't need that. Make sure your distance is at zero. Your spread again, just experiment with it. See what you like and the size as well. So I'm going to go in between and sort of increase that spread a little bit. And one more time, I'm going to add a drop shadow. This time I'm going to change the blending mode to linear dodge. We could also do something like color dodge, but linear dodge adds that extra little brightness. And again, I push this towards dark blue just to have it on the low end of the blues. If we have them all on the same blue, it's not going to have a lot of depth. So again, play with these two values. They influence each other and the look depends on what kind of ratio you have of spread to size. 
So I'm liking how it is like this. And the only thing left to do now in the layer effects is to add an inner glow. So I'll go ahead and choose inner glow. And you can see now that when we press center for the source, what happens is it's basically illuminating from the center. So I'll zoom in. So if we zoom in, we can see that there's a glow emanating from the center. If you click edge, it's going to go in to the center from the edges. And that's not realistic enough for what we want. So choose center for the source. And now we can play around with the size. The higher the size, the more feather you're going to have. So if we change it to something like 20, you can see that those edges are starting to round off. It's not really the look that I want, so I'm gonna stay around a size of 10, just because we can still see the edge of that neon glow, but it's not completely harsh. So we're gonna click OK, hit Command or Control Zero, to zoom out and have your image fill the entire window. So now we're going to add a layer mask to our layer. So I will zoom in and first I'm going to straighten my ring because it's a little off center. So now we have to decide where we want our ring to sort of fall behind the subject. So on our layer mask, which is this, we're going to click the brush, B for brush. And what I'm gonna be using here is a soft round. This gives us a very soft feathered edge so we won't see any harsh edges while we're painting. Make sure your opacity and flow are at 100% and make sure you're painting with black. This way, when you make a paint stroke, the black deletes whatever pixels you're painting over. So go ahead and start painting and you will see that the whole entire shape as well as the effects are starting to disappear. If you want to bring anything back, press X to bring up white, get your size to where you need it and just paint that back a little bit. It's going to be a little bit of trial and error getting those shapes to do what you want with the layer mask. So just click around, and just make sure everything that should be behind her is painted away. So that's looking pretty good. So now what we have to do is the last part of the tutorial, which is adding a sort of painted light leak effect. So I'm going to collapse this just because we don't need to look at it anymore. I'm going to add a new layer and using that same brush, I'm just going to increase the size a little bit. And I'm going to choose a color within the color range. It doesn't matter exactly what color you use as long as it's within that range of color we're doing. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint with 100% opacity and flow the areas where I feel that the subject is catching this new light that we've created. So if we click here, this is going to be a guide for the light source that we are making. So just go ahead and under these settings, paint the areas where you think are going to be catching light. So maybe the edge of her coat and the bottom of this area of the coat, as well as the bottom of this area and definitely the edges of here. And that's looking pretty good. So once you have a good map of the lighting, what we're going to do is we're going to blur it. So if you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So now you get to control how much of a blur you want. At zero blur, it looks the same. But as we push that slider up, it's going to kind of round out our paint strokes. So I like mine around 125. So I'm just going to press 125 and I'll hit enter and it's almost there, but there's just one last thing we need to do, which is to change this layer style blending mode from normal to color dodge. 
So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Definitely let me know if this was helpful and thanks for watching.